John's father has three sons. There's Jack, a quiet, intelligent student. Then there's Jason, a popular athlete. So who's the third son? It's John. His father has three sons, Jack, Jason, and him, John. One day, a teacher decided to give her students a test, but all of them refused to take it. She could give detention for skipping the test to only one student. All of them knew each other's names. If a student knew they were going to get a detention, they agreed to take the test. How could the teacher make all the students participate? She told them that she'd give detention to the student whose name came first alphabetically. Then this person wouldn't skip the test. The next person on the list wouldn't skip as well. And so on until the end of the list. Randy was at home, sitting in his chair with a book. Suddenly, his sister's super expensive vase fell and broke in the living room. He ran there in time to see a stranger jump out of the window and run away. Randy tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold, so he couldn't see the person. When the police arrived, they immediately knew he was lying. He'd broken the vase himself. How did they know? Glasses don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Michael Winston, who dislikes modern art, rushed into the city gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet, the manager of the gallery thanked Mr. Winston for his actions. How come? Michael was a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more exhibits. Look at this line of people at the checkout in a supermarket. They're all a colorful bunch, but one of them is trying to sneak out food out of the store. Can you tell who just by looking at them closely? You might have thought it was the pregnant woman because of the fake tummy, but look! She's wearing comfy sneakers without shoelaces so that she could slip them on easily. The guy in a baggy hoodie sure looks suspicious, but it's not food he's hiding inside his pockets. It's a kitten! And the real culprit is the guy behind him. Look at his sleeves. One of his arms looks way bigger than the other. He must be hiding something in there. A man dressed in black from head to toe was walking in the middle of the road. All of a sudden, a huge black car with its headlights off came around the corner and screeched to a halt, not to hit him. How on earth did the driver of the car see the man in black? Well, the only reasonable answer would be that it was in broad daylight. Nobody said it was nighttime after all. Three college friends met after a summer break and were sharing stories about their vacation. Lily described how she and her boyfriend had gone to Paris and seen the city from the top of the Eiffel Tower. Dylan told his friends that he had traveled to Africa with his parents. But on their last day, there was a massive volcanic eruption and it didn't spoil their vacation only because they flew home that day. And Ellie said that she had visited her uncle in Texas and learned how to ride a horse. One of the stories was fake, though. Which one? Dylan's story is fake. He couldn't fly home on the day of the eruption because when something like this happens, all flights get cancelled. Mark and Amy got stranded on a tiny uninhabited island full of sand and rocks, but not much else. They had no radio or cell phones, and there were no trees on the island to make a smoke signal. Suddenly, Amy noticed a plane circling the sky in search of them. She got a bright idea to make it notice them. Soon after, the plane picked them up. What was Amy's idea?
she suggested using rocks to spell out SOS on the sand. Mike was studying for a big test in the school library. It was already late when he finished up and suddenly heard someone shouting for help. The voice was coming from behind a locked classroom door. Mike rushed there and opened it. Inside, there was his classmate, Brad. He told Mike that he'd gone to grab a bite in the cafeteria, only to find it was closed that day. Suddenly, he blacked out. And the next thing he knew, he was locked in the classroom. Mike promised to find out who had done this. By morning, Mike had four suspects in mind. When school started, he interrogated them. Matthew told him he'd been doing his homework in a classroom. Emily said that she'd been with Matthew, but later she'd gone home. Olivia claimed that she'd been having lunch in the cafeteria, and Chris explained that he'd been sick that day. It took Mike no time to figure out who was guilty. It was Olivia. She couldn't have been eating lunch in the cafeteria because it was closed that day. Clara was in her hotel room when she heard someone knock on the door. She looked through the peephole and saw an unfamiliar man. He said, Hi, I'm the hotel manager. Sorry to bother you, but our database has crashed. Could you let me in to confirm some information? Clara immediately rushed to her phone and called hotel security. Can you figure out why? The badge on the man's chest says Chloe Smith, and that's a female name. She knew the man was a fake manager. Emma's mother asked the girl to go to the supermarket and gave her a shopping list and a bank card. But in case Emma forgot the card's pin, her mom also gave her a little clue. When Emma was already at the checkout, she took the clue out of her pocket and immediately recalled the code. Can you say what number it was if the clue was a sheet of paper with a fly, a cat, a girl, and a snake drawn on it? The pin was 6420. Emma just had to count the number of legs of each creature. Littlefield was a tiny village where nothing ever happened. But one day, Mr. Richardson, a rich farmer, arrived at the police station in tears, saying that two of his best cows were missing. There were three suspects, and each of them had to answer one question. Have you taken your neighbor's animals? Mr. Anderson said that he and Mr. Richardson had a common business and that he wouldn't risk their partnership. Mrs. Martinez stated that she'd been living in this village since birth and she wouldn't spoil her reputation because of some animals. And Mr. Jones explained that his family had been breeding pigs for centuries and he didn't have any reason to steal cows. The police officer figured out who the criminal was. Can you? The thief is Mr. Jones. How did he know that it was cows that were stolen? Nobody had told him the animal species. A woman was having breakfast at a nice restaurant. At one moment, she noticed a fly in her coffee. She was indignant and made the waiter bring her another cup. After he returned with a new cup of coffee, she shouted, What's with this service in this place? You've just brought me the same cup of coffee. How did she understand it? She had already put sugar in her previous cup of coffee. When she tried the new one, it was sweet. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and see that it's more than half full. But your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches its rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. 
That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.